patience, persistence, perseverance, the three Ps. My guest today is an amateur middleweight boxing champion who's currently training for the Olympics. And his career and his life has been one of those three Ps, patience, persistence, and perseverance. And today we're going to talk about those three Ps and how you can incorporate it into your life. So it's a big welcome to amateur middleweight champion, Daniel Hayes. How are you, Daniel? <laughs> hey, how you doing, James? Thanks so much for having me, man. Man, it's great to have you here. And uh, we actually just figured out before we started recording here that you and I met at Elton John's Oscars party uh, earlier this year uh, when I was, uh, I was there with Ty Lopez and, and we were all, all met one another. But we, didn't, uh, we didn't really make the connection until we were just shooting the shit, so to speak, before we, we hit record here, right? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy how we're all really just separated by, I call it, six degrees of separation and how really what a small world it is and how the internet connects everybody. Yeah, it's amazing. So I want to talk uh, a little bit about your career as a, as a boxing uh, champ. Um, I know that you're a two-time national champion in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago is a, is a, is a country down in the, in the Caribbean. Um, I've actually, I actually was there in 1999. I went and saw Australia play the West Indies in cricket uh, oh, okay. in Trinidad and Tobago. People, who are, uh, 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 people from the Commonwealth countries like Australia and England will understand this conversation. My American listeners probably won't, but there was a famous bar in Trinidad and Tobago called uh, the Pelican. And uh, after the, the cricket match between Australia and the West Indies in 1999, we all went there and got drunk. This is back when I was drinking. And at this, very, <laughs> at this infamous place called the Pelican Inn. Do you remember it or do you know of it or have you heard of it? I definitely heard of it. I, you know, just because now whenever I go there, it's just for sport, right? So drinking isn't really on the... <laughs> on the agenda, but I've definitely heard some crazy stories. To be honest with you, I, another big thing with Trinidad is carnival, and I haven't even experienced a carnival yet. Yeah, there you go. Well, so, see, drinking was a big part of my life too before I quit. I haven't drunk since 2010, but Good anyway, you. that's another topic. So Daniel, just for those who don't know much about you, for the uninitiated maybe, do, what, what, just give us a little one minute summary of your life story, where you're from and how you got to where you are now being the, uh, a middleweight champion. I would say a brief summary, I could do that in a sentence, is failure, failure, failure. And I've just kind of figured it out how not to fail and just take a different approach. But for me, pretty much, uh, I grew up a little bit of everywhere. I played a multiple array of different sports. And how I got into boxing is a total, you know, was, I was done college playing in college. I was done college. I jumped into mixed martial arts. And after mixed martial arts, my uncle really persuaded me to take up boxing. So it wasn't at all your traditional, you know, your traditional story where somebody that's been doing it their whole life or a father that forced their son into doing it. For me, I've just been an, a multi-sport athlete my entire life. And once I was done college, I just I just wasn't done competing and, and I've always been competed. I, I've always competed and I've always had that passion to compete and I just had too much left in the tank to give up. I like it. And so, so your mentor who got you into boxing or sports in the first place was your, was your uncle, did you say? Yeah, definitely to some degree. He was, he's definitely always been a mentor, both in business and in you know, life, sports, what have you. Yeah. And then who else has been a great mentor for you throughout, you know, as you've kind of matured into an adult and gone into the, into the boxing? Cause I know Ty Lopez. To be honest, yeah. um, you know, that, that, as I was saying, failure, failure, failure. Uh, I haven't been blessed to have like a, a very good mentor along this specific journey or just even in a lot of different life journeys. I think it's really important to get a mentor, but sometimes it's hard when you have a certain you know, skill set or you're, you're along a certain path. Um, sometimes it's hard to find those mentors or especially good ones. I think finding, you know, I, I've had in the past like coaches or trainers or what have you, but sometimes it's almost like the blind leading the blind. Right. Right. Yeah. And so for me, I haven't been blessed. Like that's why I, I say I, I've failed so much just because shoot, man, a lot of times it's just me trying to figure it out and I, I just have nobody to show me the way. 
So do you think that um, not having somebody showing you the way and figuring it out on your own has been a, has slowed you down or has it, do you feel like it's sped you up? Because, you know, uh, Warren Buffett, one of the world's richest men, um, always in the Forbes list, one of the world's greatest investors, obviously says failure. It's better to learn from somebody else's mistakes uh, rather than your own mistakes. So, yeah. So your failures has, has it been a, uh, has it helped you or has it hindered you or both? Um, it's definitely helped me because I, I, you know, this sounds so cliche, but failure is really a lesson, right? So it's either a win or a lesson. And for me, the only thing that's been kind of a hindrance is the time, right? So the time and energy spent, even though you fail, but regardless, I come out of it a better person from it. And on top of that, you know, there's no better teacher than experience itself, right? So drawing positives from it is I've definitely become a better man from it. I've definitely become a stronger individual from it. However, I do wish on some ventures I, I had saved, uh, saved myself that time. Right. Right. Uh, in college we had a great, you know, that's in sport though. You had great upperclassmen, you had great teammates and, and they kind of show your way. But as far as a mentor in life and, and that sort of thing, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a learning experience, that's for sure. So we're going to go over three things, patience, persistence, and perseverance. But before we get into that, just tell us a little bit about where your training's at for the Olympics that's coming up. Obviously, the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil uh, in July. What's going on, uh, on, on there, Daniel? Yeah, so right now I train out of the wild. Well, I've always been. I, once I started my boxing career, I said – to go back on this whole thing of mentorship, I said, you know what, I'm going to go to the best and I'm going to learn from the best. I'm going to surround myself in the environment of the best. So I went to the wildcard boxing club. That's by legendary trainer, Freddie Roach. So some guys that train out of there that people may know is it's in Los Manny Angeles, Pacquiao. California, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Manny Pacquiao, Miguel Cotto, if there's any Puerto Rican listeners, um, you know, and, and there's, Everybody in the boxing world or fight game, mixed martial arts, whatever, um, the top the top of the top goes there and trains and, you know, spars, what have you. So for me to try to, what would be the word, fix my mistakes from the past and not going to the best right away or having access to that, that's where I train at right now, the Wild Car Boxing Club. Very nice. And then, uh, and so you're training there in anticipation of representing who in the Olympics? Trinidad and Tobago. And that would be this summer in Rio. Okay, well, wonderful. And how are you feeling at the moment? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great right now. Uh, late November, I got a tricep injury and then that turned into a labrum injury. But I'm getting through it. I'm getting through it. I'm just being mindful. And it's been a tremendous learning experience where you, when you're injured, you get you're forced to take a step back and learn about your body and really just be mindful of the situation. So it's really, I'd say 2016 has been, I thought I'd be in this bubble of just training and everything. But for me, 2016 has been a year of, I've been forced to take a step back and just be mindful of everything and just observe everything. Okay. So just before we get into these three P's, patience, persistence, and perseverance, we're talking to Daniel Hayes, amateur middleweight boxing champion, currently training for the Olympics here in Los Angeles, uh, about to represent Trinidad and Tobago down in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Daniel, I saw on your website, danielhayes.com, you, had a, you did a cool little impersonation of Rocky Balboa in, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in, in, in the, the last Rocky, uh, Rocky movie where uh, he's talking to, to his son uh, out the front of his, his uh, restaurant in Philadelphia. And his son is just, you know, starting to criticize his father, Rocky Balboa, for, you know, like affecting his life and blaming him for all the problems that he's got. And Rocky Balboa sort of gives his son this very inspirational speech. So I want to see if you can, you can rehash it for us uh, now. Can you do it? So, so this, so just to set the scene for you, Daniel, Daniel's about to be Rocky Balboa in the movie Rocky Balboa, which was, I think the last movie he did, right? Uh, or the second uh... Maybe there was no, he did Creed after that. Yeah, that's right. He did Creed. So yeah. it, was, it was from the movie Rocky Balboa, and it was before the last Rocky movie, which was called Creed. And this is uh, Daniel Hayes impersonating Sylvester Stallone, in uh, acting as Rocky Balboa. Go for it. All right. So to set the scene real quick, I made it more relatable. 
acting is a passion of mine. So <laughs> I said it's going to be to my brother as opposed to my son, just because I don't okay. have a son. Okay. Listen, brother, growing up with you was a privilege. And then the time came for us to grow up and be our own men. And we did. But somewhere along the lines, man, you changed. You stopped being you. You started letting people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And then when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame. You started making excuses. Man, let me tell you something you already know, man. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you down to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. Me, you, nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it's not about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can take the hit and keep moving forward. It's about how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Man, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits. And you can't be pointing fingers saying you're not where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that's not my brother. You're better than that, man. And see. <laughs> there you go. Bravo. Well done. So yeah, that was that that was a slightly amended version of the actual script. It's so powerful, isn't it? Wonderful stuff. Yeah, it was a great. You could take so many different things from it. That's why when I was choosing a monologue, like like I was saying, acting is a passion of mine. Yeah. So when I was choosing a monologue, I wanted to make sure it was something relatable. Right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I mean, so many messages in there. The one I get out of that is is literally like take responsibility for your life. That's what I like. It's like, don't blame circumstances. Don't blame other people. It's like you are responsible for whether you're in a bad place or whether you're in a good place. You are responsible for whether you're happy or sad. You are responsible for whether you're broke or you've got money. You are responsible for, for every element of your life. That's what I agree. I, that's what I take out of it. Yeah. And what's funny is I learned that it wasn't through a method like that where you, you kind of have it all um, structured is when I was a teenager and I was playing on an AAU team and we had one of the top guys and he would make some of the stupidest decisions off court and he was super talented. And so sometimes like when we'd be on a road trip and I would say, well, why are you like, what's going on? Why are you doing that? And he's like, I don't care. My dad's this. And he would blame his dad for everything. Yeah. Right. And I just remember, and for me, I would always just keep quiet on, on like certain things like that. Cause I wouldn't overstep my boundaries. But for me, what I was learning, I was like, yeah, but just because you're blaming your dad doesn't mean if you get arrested right now, the police is going to care. Like, you're still accountable for your own actions, no right. matter what your dad did, you know? And um, so I was lucky to have seen failure or, you know, somebody going through that experience and me making sure I apply that to my life from a very young age. Right. We're talking to Daniel Hayes, amateur middleweight champion. You can find him on Twitter at, at uh, Daniel Hayes. Uh, sorry, at official underscore D Hayes. That's D H A Y E S. Go ahead and send him a tweet right now and say, hey, Daniel, I uh, loved your, uh, your Rocky impersonation. <laughs> I want to give him a word, uh, words of support uh, before the Olympics. All right. So let's do this. Patience, persistence, and perseverance. Let's deal with patience first, Daniel. Where have you, what have you learned about patience? How would you encourage the listener or viewer right now to incorporate patience into their own, own life? Just tell us what you know about patience. Well, for me, it was when I was goal setting. And sometimes for me, it would be, I have ADD, I'm a perfectionist, you name it. I think we all struggle from it, especially if you're listening to a self-improvement thing. And I had to learn that one the hard way where I had to trust in the process, you know, trust in the process of, of just going through things and whatever it is, trust in that there's going to be growth and to be patient with it. Because in, in a lot of things, I think patience is the biggest and most vital tool in just any endeavor, right? Because not everything happens overnight. And unfortunately, we live in a society where everything, everybody wants everything instantaneous, especially in a city like LA, where, you know, everything just has to be right away, or it's just like, okay, on to the next, right? And for me, it was just really learning 
how to be able to apply that, whether it's working out, whether it's encouraging a teammate, whether it's mentoring somebody, you name it, even in my business ventures, what have you. But in really being patient, not jumping the gun, not trying to just be super mindful, not even getting emotional, any sort of way. It's just trying to apply patience to every situation. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not patience where it's just you're trigger shy or you're procrastinating or whatnot. No, I'm talking patience where it's just you have a process and you're trusting in the process. When you have been training for a fight, where have you been felt like you're in a hurry and you get frustrated with- yeah so that's been a big thing i've learned this year with dealing with an injury and you know the past few years just because i'm so hyperactive is i've had to learn to save myself from myself training wise where it's you know what you can't do that today because you're going to be overtraining because then you're going to be sore tomorrow and the next thing something's going to happen and that's going to turn into a nagging injury. So just be patient. Just, just, just relax today. Just, just not, don't do anything, but instead of running six miles, do four or just, you know, just learning to taper. I, I've been forced to have to be patient and learn to taper my body, give my body time to rest, even in preparing for a fight, making sure I don't do too much, so close to the fight so to make sure i have that energy for the fight i would consider myself to be an a generally impatient person even though i practice good patience at times um i've got a lot more patient in the past year or so um it's funny you know like i i'm impatient about some of my entrepreneurial endeavors for example i'm like oh man, I want the 30 day no alcohol challenge to be bigger. Or, oh, I want the swan, my Swanee's blue light blocking glasses to sell more and to be bigger. And I have to remind myself, I'm like, in six months since I've been, since I launched my Swanee's blue light blocking glasses, I mean, it's just been monument, monumental growth, like doubling the revenue every single month. But there's something inside my brain and the human brain which even though that's amazing, you still go, it's not enough. Yeah. Do, yeah. You, do you experience that? Oh my God, so much. And that is just, I don't want to have that feeling. And I'm sure you could relate is I don't want to have that feeling of, oh, I didn't do enough. Oh, I left the stone unturned. I want to make sure I turned over every stone and did it four yes. times over, yeah. you know? And it's just, even when you're sitting there watching for that growth as an entrepreneur, or what have you it's just you just want this explosion and it's it's so hard it's so hard and one of the biggest things for me that i learned is especially anything uh for me business wise entrepreneurially boxing don't do that past a certain time so i could fall asleep because i notice if i do that like let's say where this is again trial and error before going to sleep i'm not falling asleep for the next hour right Right. So that's definitely something that I've learned. So maybe your Swanee glasses might help with that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, if, if you want to be the best at your game, Daniel, you're going to have to wear a pair of Swanee's blue light blocking glasses. They block, yeah. <laughs> they block the blue light from your electronics before you go to sleep at night. So you fall asleep faster and you get more time in that deep REM sleep, the restorative sleep, which for, uh. for an athlete like yourself is, is super important. But anyway, that's another topic. Um, so, okay. So patience, trust in the process, be patient. It is the most vital tool. Uh, another way that I found to be patient or to practice good patience is to be, uh, is to write in a gratitude diary every morning, like just for two, mm. three, four, five minutes, write down three things that you're grateful for. And even that act of being grateful can make you can increase your patience. Because then all of a sudden you stop looking at, oh, I need to do this. I've got to do that. And you start going, well, look at what I've achieved. This is amazing. Like I feel so grateful for everything that I've got up until this point. But the human brain is so fickle, Daniel, isn't it? Like it's amazing. You know, I can, I can yeah. feel like I'm on top of the world and feel like I'm just smashing it. And then I meet people who are selling 10 times more than me or have a better romantic relationship or have are married with kids and, 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 and then I go, oh, I'm not, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not married with kids. I'm 40 and, I'm, and I don't have that. And then you start comparing yourself 
And even though you know you shouldn't do that, yeah, you still do that. <laughs> it's oh my god, I, I I can relate on so many different levels. And what I mean by that is being an athlete or just being in this thing. So for my teammates from college, they're all you know teachers or entrepreneurs or what have you, and they're just in a different realm of their life where, Hey, I'm getting married. Hey, I'm doing this. And so all of a sudden for me, I've become not a social outcast, but you feel that I don't fit in. And so where I've taken the biggest example of patience is where it's like, listen, man, I'm going for these goals. These are the set. And this is my self affirmation. I'm going for these goals. They're not going for the same goals. Don't get me wrong. I do have friends that are, they're not going for the same goals. These are the sacrifices that it's going to take to achieve those goals. And this is what I signed up for. And this is what's going to make me a better person. So I can't put myself in that bubble with them, comparing with them, which it's so hard, especially if you're just out for dinner or stuff like that. And they're talking about, oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing this. And, you know, all these things. And I'm like, Hey, sorry, man. I'm, I'm stuck in like this strict diet and and drink and I can't drink and you know eating <laughs> no, it, and, and just all this stuff, right? And but they're probably this- looking at you, going, "Oh, Daniel, he's so ripped. He's so in shape. Oh my god, he's going to compete at the Olympics. Oh my god, I wish I was in shape like that. Oh shit, my life is so. <laughs> I'm not well, strong and I'm not hanging out at Manny Pacquiao's gym in Los Angeles and like ah. Oh. <laughs> the, well, you know, when it's close friends and former teammates, they look at me like, uh, they don't look at you like that. <laughs> they look at you like, oh, this stupid idiot. Like, <laughs> who do you think he is? You're not tough. I'll box you. Like, you know, that, <laughs> that kind of, you know what it's like when you have, you know, close friends. Oh, yeah. Pretty- my Australian friends are like that. I get off the, in America, all of my friends here very rarely make fun of me. They're always like, oh man, yeah, go for it. You're awesome. And then I get off the plane in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and my Australian friends are like, g'day, wanker exactly yeah oh, they, they yeah. Can... here comes mr hollywood how you doing yeah i i for me and my group i probably get made the most fun of <laughs> and i call it reverse bullying but it's funny just like with them you'll get humbled so quick oh yeah big time all right let's move along here that's patience so make sure we trust in the process and even though it's going to be hard naturally you're not going to be patient if you're anything like me or daniel you're not going to be patient you're going to naturally be impatient we just have to recognize that that's the case and we've just got to control it. And the way to control it is to trust in the process and also uh, um, be grateful, write in a gratitude diary in the morning. Um, let's move on to persistence, the second P. We're talking about patience, persistence, and perseverance. Persistence, what do you know about persistence, Daniel? The thing that I've learned over the past few years with persistence is if you keep trying, keep trying, like obviously, you know, Anthony Robbins, he says, if you keep trying and at the same way for achieving the same goal and you're not getting the same result, then that's insanity. Right. Mm -hmm. So I like, I agree with that, but I'm saying with persistence is just, you keep on trying a different approach. You keep on trying a different approach, but the biggest thing is that experience gained from just even trying because if you don't achieve the goal, the person you become is so much worth it, right? So that's why I'm a huge advocate of persistence and just because you're learning different approaches through failure. You're learning different things. And once you gain, once you gain that experience, it's, it, that's lifelong. I was just, uh, I put on my Snapchat yesterday. My Snapchat is uh, at James Swanick and I, I usually do a quote of the day and a book of the day. And I actually took a screenshot of the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, one of the great uh, success mindset books of all time. And he talks about persistence being one of the most important things and that all successful people show persistence. Um, so if, you, if you're not following my Snapchat, make sure you do because I do post in little things like that. And also, if you want to get my book notes on the book, Think and Grow Rich, just go to my website, jameswanick.com. Um, and there's a little opt-in box there that says, hey, I'll send you three of my favorite books and, and the notes on that. So I can, I'll send you my personal notes on that book if you just go to jameswanick.com. But persistence... You don't want to persist at something and like, like, as we say in Australia, you don't want to flog a dead horse, which means you don't want to just like be doing the same thing over and over again and trying to, and expecting a different result, but getting the same result. Persistence is 
sticking with a goal or sticking with a vision, but knowing that you're going to have to like maybe change plans or change course along the way. But as long as you are, you keep moving forward, like you said, Tony Robbins says, people are happy when they feel like they're progressing progress equals happiness. So, um, where have you specifically been persistent as it relates to you, your upcoming representation in the Olympics? Yeah. So in boxing, I've been persistent in just taking fights just because gaining that experience, right? So whether it's a bad matchup, good matchup, what have you, just throwing yourself in the fire, whether it's inspiring, whatnot, where a lot of people would say, no, you're not ready, or no, you know, just the, the laundry list of excuses. But for me, it's where I've just gone, and I'm just like, I know that experience. There was before the championship fight of the Golden Gloves, I remember it was last year, and a good teammate of mine, a good friend of mine, he said, this is the first time I ever heard him say this, he said, listen, Dan, I don't know if you're going to win this fight. And that for me, that was like, oh, wow, this is the first time he's saying I'm not going to win. And I don't know if you're going to win this fight, but I know you're going to come out of this fight a better fighter. And when I heard that, because the guy I was matched against, um, he was a great fighter as well. And this is a championship fight of the Golden Gloves. And um, it, it, it was just one of those things that stuck with me where I'm just going through that whole thing of, I know I keep going back to going through the process, but in persisting in it, in persisting in throwing yourself in the fire, throwing yourself in uncomfortable situations, because if you keep on persisting and doing that, the person or just even the, the things and how much stronger you're going to become. And like, forget even just making this relatable in sport. Let's say you have approach anxiety and let's say it's a girl, right? Mm -hmm. The more that you persist in not necessarily that one person, but in trying to, to tackle that uh, approach anxiety or just something like that, the better you're going to become at it, right? So that's why I think persistence is such a big thing. All right. So we've got patience, persistence. And then the third P, Daniel, which we're talking about. And by the way, we're talking to Daniel Hayes, who's Olympic bound in 2016. Get him on Twitter at official underscore D Hayes. And you can check out his website, which is uh, danielhayes.com, right? Daniel Hayes? Daniel-hayes.com. Daniel-hayes.com. Okay. Uh, the third P is perseverance. So how does perseverance differ from uh, persistence? And where have you had to persevere in your career? Okay. So I would say perseverance is where it all comes together, right? And I know I've been saying this whole thing about process but so example people are going well then what does perseverance mean so perseverance is defined by the steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success right so when i'm saying about the process you're going to need patience to go through that process you're going to need persistence to keep on going to go through that process but the perseverance is the whole big picture is when you achieve it so you have to persevere through it, through those hard times, through those difficulties, through those adversities and whatever it is. And that's where I think the perseverance comes in. For me to make that relatable, I've had to persevere through injuries. I've had to persevere through, you know, your bank account not being the best just because all your money is going to training. I've had to persevere through so many different things so many different obstacles but it's just because i kept my mind on the goal and my vision and i'm just trusting in it i like that i i kind of look back on my life and i go man i've been blessed right i, I mean i i have been blessed and i haven't knock on wood really experienced any real serious trauma mm. like my family's all healthy uh, That's good. I've, I've never had a serious injury. I've never had a very significant health scare. Um, and I kind of suspect as grateful as I am for that, I kind of suspect that it, it makes me a little bit soft and, and I haven't been able to fully appreciate perseverance because I haven't had a major injury. I haven't really struggled financially. Although I did when I moved to London, actually back in 99, I was sleeping on a friend's sofa and couldn't afford razor blades. But I mean, in, in hindsight, it's, it's not like 
it's not it's first world problems right I'm, everything's going to be fine so i'm wondering whether perseverance can really be entrenched into someone's mind if they've just every, they've had it too good for too long um do you re, do we really need to suffer some kind of trauma to really fully appreciate and make that perseverance happen what do you think daniel I think having a great mentor along the lines would help with that where sometimes it's just having that when you're trying to go through it, somebody's like, Hey, listen, man, two years ago I was there and they, they just make it relatable. And yeah. you know, just those small words of encouragement to go back to what you were saying though. I think obviously, you know, you, you have somebody that's faced adversity versus that hasn't faced adversity, you know, with mm. pertaining to persistence. And yeah, I, th I think the person that has actually gone through it and have experienced it for better or worse, they at least have that experience under the belt. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I don't think necessarily if you haven't experienced it, that that's necessarily a handicap for you where it's just like, Oh shoot, I haven't experienced this. So I'm not going to be as mentally strong. You know, uh -huh. I, I think some people, people learn very differently, right? I have some friends that they learn without having to go through it, but they learn it just like they go through it. So for me, I notice I'm so, especially people I love and care about, as I've said, I failed so much. I'm always so quick to share that. So they don't have to go down that road. Right. right. And the, there's some people that learn that way. And then there's other people that don't learn that way. Right. right. So I think it's all depends on how you learn as an individual. You know, there's a great book called the happiness hypothesis by Jonathan Haidt, who's a New York university professor. And it's probably one of the top three books that I've ever read. And he says in, based on all these studies, people, uh, uh, when you experience real trauma in your life, like a yeah. massive setback, that actually is the best thing for you because it drives you along in all areas of your life thereafter. So as bad as it is to experience and suffer real trauma, what the studies have found is that people who do experience that in many cases go on, it just drives them to be hugely successful in whatever endeavors they, they, they pursue. Um, huh. so I, I, yeah, I think that's, that's obviously, I believe a hundred percent. I, I believe in that a hundred percent, just, you know, especially living in Los Angeles. Oh my gosh. You <laughs> see some people that they experience that and they just never get back up. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, the I guess the challenge, the challenge then, um, is for people who haven't experienced, like you don't want to deliberately go and experience trauma. Obviously you want to avoid that at all costs, but I think the challenge then for people who haven't, who are blessed, who have blessed in the sense that, you know, there's no, never been any real massive significant trauma in their life. The challenge for them is how do you then create that perseverance and create that persistence without having to rely on some shocking event to really drive you? Yeah. And, and being able to draw from that and, then when you have that in retrospect, like I, for me, I know some of my most trying and adverse times at the moment. Oh my God, you're just, you're, you're, <laughs> you're down and out and you know, you slowly crawl, not even intentionally, you slowly crawl back up, you build your confidence back, build your strength back, build your mental fortitude back. And then looking back, maybe it's a year from now, maybe it's two years from now that's then when you're like, Oh shit. Oh, pardon my language. I can, I've done this. I, I've been through that. And you know what? I've become so much stronger from it. It's, yeah. it's really only, you know, how Steve Jobs says you can't connect the dots looking forward. Yeah. It's only looking back. Yeah. But that's so, that's so true <laughs> because true. really when you're in the moment and just being in the moment, it's, it's, you're not going to see it. Right. So there you go. The three P's persistence, perseverance uh, i'm sorry patience <laughs> per persistence and perseverance i like that so patience trust in the process persistence keep going and perseverance it's the whole big picture it's steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success i love that so just before we wrap this up daniel i wanted to ask you a question um yeah of course in that rocky balboa speech that you yeah. gave before in that script 
Rocky's always saying, you know, life is a very mean and nasty place. Um, that's, that's always troubled me a little bit um, because I'm, I'm a big believer in life is whatever you call it. So if you say, Whoa, life is hard, then you're going to see that life is hard. If you say life is a gift, then you're going to look around and just be appreciative of life all around you. And if you say life is a party, then look, look at how my physiology changes right away. Yeah. I'm like party, even the way I said it, you're going to look at every opportunity as a party. So for me, that line, when he says, you know, it's a very mean and nasty place, I almost didn't agree with him, even though I know in, in that character's story, in Rocky Balboa's story, he, it's been mean and nasty to him. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Do you think that life and, and world and earth is a very mean and nasty place generally, or do you look at it as a, as a, more, as a more positive view on that? I was listening to a cool podcast about fear, right? Mm-hmm. And it was talking about how that's all self-made, that's all self-inflicted. But don't get it wrong, danger is very real, right? So just in taking that, I would say, yes, life is what you make it. And I agree with that 100%. It's though there's certain things you just can't avoid, like death. Mm-hmm. And that is, I, I've only experienced that a, a handful of times. Mm-hmm. And holy shoot, <laughs> that is, whew. but it takes that mental fortitude to get through it. And everybody's going to have to face it. But I believe it is what you make it. It is what you make it. At the end of the day, we're all emotional creatures, right? Right. We're not, we're not robots. It, it, if you program yourself to be a robot, you're still, you're going to feel something sooner or later, or right. then you're just empty inside. Right. right? Um, I think it's, it, it, life is, I agree. Life is what you make it, but to best equip yourself with those psychological tools to help you have that mindset where you can always find the positive and the negative. Cause if you don't have that, or if you're not surrounded in that sort of environment, it's so easy to become negative when something like that happens, just right. anything. Right. And if you don't have that knowledge or that, that's why I'm so big on self-improvement. If you don't have that, then you're just going to go in that vicious cycle. Right. So I agree a hundred percent with you and what you're saying, how life is what you make it. However, at that, no matter what, how you paint it, life can be very dark and dangerous. And, whew, <laughs> there's no I, worse opponent. <laughs> next time I see Sylvester Stallone, I'm going to say, ah, oh, maybe you might want to amend that speech in the Rocky Balboa movie. <laughs> I think that life is very mean and nasty. However, it can be a gift. Yeah. <laughs> well, Daniel Hayes, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to coach us on patience, persistence, and perseverance. Uh, good luck for the Olympics, my friend. Uh, Daniel Hayes, of course, the amateur middleweight champion representing Trinidad and Tobago, two-time national champion there. Make sure you find him on Twitter at uh, official underscore D Hayes. And you can check out his website at daniel Hayes H-A-Y-E-S dot com. Thanks so much, Daniel. Are you cut off? There you go. It's okay. I can hear you. I was just saying thanks so much, Daniel. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. All right. And to the listener and the viewer, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Get happier in seven seconds by going for a gratitude walk, just like I am right now. I'm taking Buster for a little walk here in Abingdon in Oxford, 